Blessings. Hello, hello, hello. Good night, good night, good night. I just want to first apologize for getting a whole 30 minutes late. I really, really apologize. There's been so much going on. I had to make sure my client was good at the hospital. There wasn't any issues so that I could leave her for an hour so that I could not have to cancel. So I do apologize, but we are going to get this done tonight. Blessings everyone that's just coming in. So first of all, um, welcome to Boom Wellness Wednesdays. Uh, I am Ramona Riley aka the vagina lady and owner of cosmic woman uh tonight is a little different than most nights because we are going to be just me personally i'm just going to be answering questions it's literally just about giving you guys a better understanding of what's going on and what we do and if there are issues that you have and what you need to do to heal them or make them better. So it is literally all about you. It has nothing to do with the information that um, I have literally thought about um, and is ready to present to you guys. It is literally about what you guys are thinking, your opinions and um, your feelings towards certain things so that we can get a better understanding, okay? So of course, uh, usually and always, uh, I like to start with prayer. Once we have done prayer, we will get all into all of that nice excitement. So you can bow your heads or do what you'd usually do for prayer and I will lead the prayer. Dear God, we all on this live are just grateful, just so thankful for the protection, the love, the guidance, the, the natural things that you provide to allow us to heal ourselves on a daily basis. From the earth, to the plants, the minerals, the vitamins, we just really are so grateful for all these things. We ask you now to surround us with peace, not just for our minds, but for our hearts. And we thank you for any type of healing that has already happened just because you've tuned in tonight. Amen. Okay. All right, let's get this started. So uh, you guys can go ahead and post your questions how you'd usually do it. I'm just going to kind of like rant and rave for a little bit uh, until I start seeing the questions. What I realize most times is I have clients that, or should I say, there are women that follow me on a daily basis they look at the stories they like the posts they might even comment maybe not comment and they might do this for a whole year before they reach out you guys are watching me getting to know me um, all of these great things, but it is taking you guys a while to connect, to reach out, to say, hey, okay, now I have a problem. I have a problem. I've realized that I have a problem. What do I do about it? 
Now, don't get me wrong. Uh, I'm not trying to rush anyone because when it comes to reproductive, I know that it's a sensitive topic. I understand that um, women will feel more vulnerable or men will feel more vulnerable because, you know, this is an issue that no person should have to deal with. But I need you guys to understand that this whole thing right here, this whole cosmic woman, the vagina lady, this is like a safe space. And when I say safe space, I mean, you don't have to want, need, or anything, a consultation, but just to reach out, just to say, or, you know, just to say, I am hurting right now or I don't know why I'm in this position or what did I do in my past life to deserve this sometimes you just want to tell somebody it doesn't mean that you expect a response or you expect them to be able to fix the situation but it's literally just to be able to express be able to express the the pain or the hurt or the discomfort that you are feeling because no woman should be suffering with periods we already know that hands down i've spoken that spoken about that time and time again no girl no woman no no female entity should have to suffer with painful or uncomfortable periods there's no reason for that so let's move from let's move away from that because that is the obvious now we're talking about conditions reproductive conditions that women go through so we could say cysts we could say fibroids we could say endometriosis we could say and meiosis we could say a lot of different things but when it comes to having a particular condition of the reproductive system, that in itself makes you more vulnerable and uncomfortable. But I need you guys to have an understanding that this is a safe space. And so when you need to express, Express the fact that fuck I've been trying six years to get pregnant and that shit is not happening and I'm annoyed and I just want to scream and I just want to yell and I just want to I just want to ah This is a safe space If it is that you know you are saddened by the fact that You know there is something reproductive or there's something emotional that is happening please this is a safe space. I want to create a safe space. I want everyone to have an understanding that when things are not going right or don't seem okay, there are different techniques, there are different methods, there are different products, there are different things that we can do to kind of build back ourselves build back who we are build who we are supposed to be okay okay the questions are coming in let's get to that is it really possible to plan for specific sex of your baby saw a clipping the other day with jinx and since then been wondering about it okay so all right so she used the chinese calendar Okay, and if anybody doesn't know who Jinx is, that is Jodie Stewart or Jodie Henriquez, I should say, which is Sean Paul's wife. Um, she's, she has been a client. Um, she went on YouTube and did a video about Cosmic Woman and how we helped her. Uh, and so I definitely have been getting a lot of text messages and emails and WhatsApp messages about that. There are certain times of the month that you can have sex or not necessarily have sex but actually become pregnant that can 
let you decide is this going to be a boy or is this going to be a girl now i don't go too much into this when it comes to my clients because sometimes it becomes a little too much pressure and not everyone deals with pressure well so just to become pregnant a lot of my clients are that's enough for them doesn't matter if it's a boy doesn't matter if it's a girl the fact is they're pregnant they've now delivered their baby they can hold their baby in their arms they can breastfeed their baby and they are good to go but i will say that with my daughter i also use the child chinese calendar and i realized that she was a girl before i even did my ultrasound at 11 weeks and the reason why is because i would go back and look at the fact of when i was ov ovulating versus during ovulation and actually getting pregnant when that would be and it so happened that yes i was right everything went well and i had the girl that i wanted so yes there is a way that you can determine your sex of your baby it takes a lot of work it takes a lot of knowing your body you have to know when you're ovulating and i mean and know it uh you want because you're going to want to start to do things before ovulation and you're going to also want to be doing sex during ovulation but yes you can definitely figure out or plan the sex of your baby um, from Chinese calendars for sure. I wish I had a woman's circle in Jamaica where we could sit. Yes, I agree. Um, it's actually something that I have been talking with um, one of my fellow period um, advocates about uh, and it's something that I hope happens because there needs to be that support group uh, and I think the reason why there's a little bit of fear with that is because women in general especially in Jamaica have a lot of fear you have a support group but then no one comes what the hell is the point if no one is coming to the support group the whole point is for people to come for people to get healing for people to feel like there is support um, so I do agree that that needs to happen but I also think that women also need to become a little bit more open and put themselves out there you gotta put yourselves out there because you could be helping someone else that's going through the same thing. Imagine, for example, and I don't mean to talk about myself, but this is just an example. I have this horrible reproductive disease that I now have to have a hysterectomy from. And instead of... And then, I, and then I healed myself. I healed myself from this horrible disease. I could keep it quiet. And I could just be happy that I healed myself, be happy that now I have a daughter, be happy that my family is complete. But that wouldn't have helped anyone else in the world. It would not have helped a soul because I would have kept it to myself. So when we come into this whole support group, yes, you going into the support group helps you. But you going into that support group also helps others. So there are many women that, you know, are empowered by the fact that I was supposed to have a hysterectomy at 29, decided I was going to go the natural route, and then healed myself, and now here we have Cosmic Woman. What if I didn't? What about those 700, 1,000, 20,000, 
What about all of those clients that would have never got healing because I never talked, because I never expressed what was happening and how I was healing myself and how great I felt from being able to heal myself. So yes, I definitely agree with you. There needs to be more talk about it. We need to have our support groups and not just have the support groups, but people need to fucking attend them. Guys, attend them. They're open, they're there, go. They're free, go. Go. Okay. I think I answered that question that was long. Uh, let's see here. Why, why is it yeast infections keep coming back after my period? Okay. So a lot of times the reason why you get a yeast after or before your period is because your period is creating it. Your period is throwing off your pH balance. That's what the issue is. So we have to make sure that we're fixing the period in terms of the blood and the pH of the period, but we're also fixing your natural blood. We're also making sure your gut is healthy. We're also making sure that there is not a lot of waste period or waste blood that has turned into waste that is what usually causes the yeast infections if you suffer from a yeast infections a yeast infection before your period or during your period what i would say to you is before your period or after your period i mean what i would say is you definitely want to be on probiotics 100 billion live cultures probiotics I would also say to you that you want to cleanse. You want to do a steam for sure. You want to steam once a week, right up until your period, until that period. When that period comes, see how your body has reacted. Has it shifted? Has it changed? Are you not getting that? Are you getting it more? But usually it's not it's not that you get it more usually you find that it subsides because of course we're making sure that the gut is healthy we are cleaning the blood and usually that's enough is it safe to eat flax seed while trying to cleanse okay so flax seed Flax seed is not healthy for everyone to eat. Okay. So for all my wonderful, beautiful, amazing PCOS sisters out there, or ones that suffer from cysts, any kind of cysts, I don't care where the cysts are, flax seeds are not for you. Flax seeds have estrogen. If you suffer from an estrogen condition, you don't need that. So if you have endometriosis, if you have fibroids, if you have cysts, if you have PCOS, those things, you don't wanna have to eat any kind of, um, of flax seed. So please know your condition and please know what it is that you can eat or have. Yeast infections cannot stop you from getting pregnant. Now, bacteria vaginosis can create a situation where miscarriage can happen. Usually, you do not find them in yeast. You find that issue in yeast infections. Since I've been off the injection about a year now, it seems hard to get pregnant. Okay, so I'm not. I'm like. I'm assuming that the injection is the Depo-Provera, um, which is a birth control injection that can stop you from getting your period. You take it every three months usually. If you are on that, and depending on how long you are on it, you will find that it will be difficult for you to get pregnant. Okay, you are on a birth control that you do not have to take daily. 
you don't have to take weekly you actually take it every three months which means that it's extremely strong so if you are trying to get pregnant and you've been on this birth control you got to detox you've got to cleanse you've got to remove that from your body if you're interested in that send us a dm send us a whatsapp we can tell you what are the better products to do or maybe we will say a consultation is best for you because you've been suffering from other things as well okay but yes it can be hard you can go two years you could go three years you could go 10 years without getting pregnant depending on how long you have been on the Depra Provera. I've been having heavy bleeding with clots for 14 days. It looks like bright red. Is it normal? Doc said I should watch it. Okay. Number one, I don't like clots. And any of my clients will always tell you, Ramona says no clots. So when they see less clots, they get excited because they know that healing is happening. You don't want to be having clots. It is the uterine lining that's shedding. We don't want the uterine lining to be shedding like that because it gets too thin and then implantation for pregnancy cannot happen. Or it gets so thin that it cannot hold up and stand up to the contractions that's happening when you have your period or before and during you have your, during you, when you have your period, okay? The next thing is 14 days is a long time of a period. I mean, I expect people to be having a three day period, four day max. 14 days is a long time. So with having a 14 day period, I would say, baby girl, there's an issue in itself just from the length of your period. I don't care if you didn't have clots, you could have had no clots and had a 14 day period. The 14 day period is an issue in itself. So we want to lessen that. We want to lessen that. And how you do that is balancing the hormones. How you do that is doing vaginal steaming. How you do that is changing your pads and your tampons. How you do it, that is cleansing your body. Good thing I asked about the flax seeds sitting here eating them. <laughs> yeah, you you think you 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 think you know you think you think you're doing the right thing and then you realize holy fuck I'm not, you know, it's it's crazy. My body is in menopausal state to treat endo. Didn't work. Didn't work. Still had chest pain one month after six months of treatment. Okay. So if you suffer from endometriosis, number one, do not let your doctor put you in um, premenopausal state. That does not help. It does not heal the situation. I have clients that have endometriosis, suffer from endometriosis, take their clothes off, put their belly on the tile just to get some relief if they could get some relief because their endo pain is so bad and they get pregnant and they end up not having that issue and they have an easy breezy amazing period and the reason why that's the case is because we are healing the endo from the root. We are balancing the hormones. We are cleansing the body. We are building the body and the reproductive system the way it should be. So don't do anything negative. Don't start early menopause don't put yourself through that don't go on birth control none of it works none of it works if it worked we would do it and we wouldn't be worried about having to change our diet having to this having to that it doesn't work what works is healing the root of the problem that's what works Okay, so if you're having a collapse long monthly, right, 
um we definitely want to be working on your reproductive system we definitely want to be working on your lymphatic system and we definitely also trey we definitely also want to work um on your hormones okay we don't want to become an issue i have a friend where her lungs collapsed and all kind of madness and it was like some emergency excitement that had to happen it's not it's there's no need to okay send me a dm let's work it out because no matter if you suffer from endometriosis or from any kind of reproductive issue we can figure it out and make sure that if you even have to live with it you can live with it without having to suffer this is what i love about you you share yourself with us and help us well guys i have to share myself it's this is how it even all started. This, this is, this, this, it started with myself. It started with me. It started with the depression that I went through because I felt like my body was flawed. And every single time it is that I have a consultation with a woman, which is every day, <laughs> more than once a day, I can understand where they're coming from because at that point you feel as if there is either something you did in your past life that has fucked you up in this life or you feel as if your body has failed you and when you go through this on a daily basis where you're walking through you know going through life feeling like your body has failed you that in itself puts you in a mental place that's not healthy so how could I want to be able to help heal if I don't talk about the stresses that I went through? If I don't talk about how it is that I healed or, you know, of course, with God's help, healed myself. It's something I got to talk about. Can't talk about it enough. We spend so much money on gynecologists and all they do is give us pills, etc. Most of us aren't educated about our womb. Well, you have to understand, OBGYNs, gynecologists, they do what they were taught to do. Okay? And what they were taught to do, what they were taught to do was to diagnose. What they were also taught to do is to treat the issue. They're not taught to heal. They're taught to do the surgery. That's what they do. That's what they're going to do. That's what they were taught to do. They were not taught to heal the body. They weren't taught to balance the body. They weren't taught that. So they can't bestow that information upon you. If you want to heal your body, you have to go to someone that heals. If you need to have surgery, you need to go to someone that does surgery. It's just what it is. It's just what it is. I've never gotten pregnant, but I have a period every month. Could it be the cysts? It could be the cyst my doc found about a year ago. Do you have any recommendation? I worry about it a lot. Okay, so if you realize that you have cysts, it means that your estrogen level is too high. So what that means is you need to remove that estrogen. How do you remove the estrogen? You clean your liver. You strengthen your liver. You cleanse your liver. That's how we get rid of it. We also don't eat foods that have estrogen because estrogen creates the freaking condition, okay? So don't eat the estrogen either. Those are the things you want to look into. I've read that your diet has a lot to do with management of endometriosis. Yes. If you suffer from endometriosis, there are certain foods you cannot eat. Cannot gluten 
soy, fake sugars, beef, chicken, liver, kidney, anything with hormones, it's not your friend. If you suffer from endometriosis, you have to change your diet. If you suffer from fibroids and you want to fix it without surgery, you have to change your diet. If you suffer from cysts, PCOS, you have to change your diet. It's just a part of it. You gotta. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. What's the treatment for PCOS? <laughs> There's so much treatment for PCOS. It just depends on the type of PCOS that you have. Every, there are so many different types. There are like four different types of PCOS. I can't tell you how to treat that. Not to mention every woman is different. What I can tell you is you want to watch the estrogen that you're putting inside of your body. That is very, very, very key. You want to watch that. Um, I would say also, you also want to make sure that you are removing the estrogen from your liver as well. Because the estrogen is soaking in your liver. Just like the woman that suffers from fibroids, just like the woman that is suffering from endometriosis. All of that. If it's, if it's that your... You, you have male hormones that are in your body. A lot of times that comes with PCOS. You have to remove that from the liver as well. Is it dangerous not seeing your period for eight to nine months without any contraceptive or anything? Yes. If you are not seeing a period... Maybe because of contraceptives, maybe not because of contraceptives, maybe for whatever friggin' reason, it is an issue. You need to see a period every single, every single month. The only reason why you should not see a period every month is one, because you're freaking pregnant, <laughs> or two, because your diet is so clean, so, so, so clean, that you don't even see a period because there's nothing to release. And very few and far between women will go through that. Because that takes discipline. Like a different kind of discipline. Different type of lifestyle. Does the morning after pill affect fertility? My girlfriend and I are trying. Okay, so if you are trying to get pregnant, the morning after pill is not the pill for you. If you're trying to get pregnant, birth control pills are also not good for you, okay? So I would not suggest that. Let's say, for example, your girlfriend has done the day after pill, the morning after pill for a while. Let's say three years has gone by and she's taken it six, seven times over the past three years. But now you guys are ready. Yes, it could have definitely affected some stuff. So you want to make sure that your uterine lining is strong. You want to make sure the hormones are balanced. You want to make sure that she's ovulating. So yes, that can definitely cause an issue. True that, it doesn't work. Doctor tried every treatment under the sun for endo, but refused to do proper diagnosis. Nothing works. The pain is real. The pain is real, but the pain doesn't have to be real. So if you don't want the pain to be real, send us a DM, send us a WhatsApp. Let's fix it. Let's fix it. It doesn't have to be like that. You don't have to suffer. What does the yoni egg do for women? Okay. So the yoni egg, the yoni egg is a healing crystal that's shaped in an egg form. It's cut in an egg form. And it helps to tone the vagina muscles. It helps to awaken the vagina. It helps to strengthen the pelvic floor. It helps with incontinence. It helps with a lot of things. So it really just depends on what's going on with you. 
You choose the egg that you want based on how attracted you are to the stone, or maybe it might be on some, because you choose that egg because you're trying to manifest something, but usually what you're trying to manifest, you'll be attracted to in general. Uh, but I would suggest every woman to try a uni egg, do exercises with it, go to bed with it, have sex with it. I suggest all of that. Good night, Megan. Is fish and shrimp okay for PCOS? Okay, so if you're going to do fish and shrimp and you suffer from PCOS or you suffer from endometriosis or you suffer from fibroids or you suffer from anything um, hormonal, what I will say to you is you want to make sure that your estrogen level, that your, your hormones itself are balanced. And how you could do that is looking at your shrimp, looking at your fish. Are they wild caught or are they farm raised? I cannot say this enough, my beautiful, beautiful goddesses. I can't say this enough. If it is that you are eating farm raised fish or shrimp or whatever, it has way too much estrogen. It has antibiotics. It's an issue. It's an issue. Guys, if we stop eating half of that fuckery, half of it, we can realize that we can get a period down to one day. My period lasts me two days, 48 hours. By the 48 hour, my period is over. I have no more discharge. I have no more brownness. I have no nothing. And this is coming from a woman who had a 12 and 11 day period. And the reason why is because when it comes to certain hormones, I cut them out. Now, what I will say is in the past year and a half, I have eaten much more meats than I usually would usually eat. And what I can say to you is because I put certain things, other things in my diet that kind of balance the hormones or because I detox on a regular basis or that type of thing, what I find is that I do not have these long periods, these painful periods, all of these different things either. So when we suffer from painful periods, when we suffer from long periods, when we suffer from periods with clots, when we suffer from periods that have smell, when we have PCOS, when we have fibroids, when we have endometriosis, when we have any of these things, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't have to. You are literally putting yourself under friggin' stress and strain because the reality is it doesn't have to be. So if we cut down the fake shrimp, if we cut down the fake fish, if we cut down all these things, we find that we find that we don't have these problems as much, okay? The internet is acting up, guys. I'm so, 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 so sorry. The internet is acting so funny. So, so funny. Okay, so it's like going back and forth on my, on the Facebook. So I am... I'm going to empty out the fridge and pantry now. <laughs> Good night. You have any liver cleansing routine apart from not eating chicken and beef and soy? Yes, definitely have that. Um, we have liver cleanses. We have regular cleanses. We have liver cleanses. It just really depends on what's going on. Send us a DM. We can help. Uh, we can kind of lead you into the best direction of what it is that you need, what it is the best, what is best for you.
man me fi tell you may have a part the jerk pork and anything from the cow yes yes when it comes to healing yourself we do have to take away the pork we do have to take away the beef we do have to take away those things because those things are not toxic and it's not toxic just because it's beef it's toxic also because of what they're putting into the beef what they're putting into you know what they're what the what the beef is eating those things are important that is the reason that is the problem I have endo ovarian cysts and fibroids. Went vegan, I got pregnant twice, and that ended in two miscarriages. I'm still trying. Okay, okay, goddess. So you have endo, you um, ovarian cysts and fibroids. All three of those issues, cysts, fibroids, endo. All three of them have one thing in common. What is that? It is estrogen. Your estrogen is way too high. Your estrogen is too high if you're suffering from all of those estrogen driven conditions so if you're suffering from those estrogen driven conditions please send us a message i want to make a treatment plan for you i want to remove all that estrogen from your liver so that you don't only just have to get pregnant but you can have the amazing beautiful bum bundle of joy that you deserve okay Cis gone and fiber shrunk. Diet does work. I agree. Diet definitely does work. How do you know if you're ovulating? Okay, so when it comes to ovulation, most women ovulate anyway between 12 to 18 days after their period. There are some women that ovulate before that. Like for me, for example, I ovulate like seven days after my period. I ovulate right after my period is done. Okay, so you have to definitely make sure that you figure out when it is that you're ovulating and if you're ovulating by your ovulating strips, get an understanding. A lot of times when a woman is ovulating, there are signs. There is discharge if she's ovulating. She feels a little bit more horny and frisky when she's ovulating. Um, she also will as I said, have discharge as well. Sometimes there's a cramping feeling or a turning feeling that happens in her abdomen. So it really just depends on the woman. But there are usually signs, and if you're not finding signs, definitely get the strip and do it on a regular basis so that you can figure out when it is that you're having your period, when it is that you're going to be ovulating. Because guys, let's keep it real. No woman wants to suffer from painful ovulation. No woman wants to suffer from painful periods. Painful periods? Painful... Guys, anybody on this live right now that suffer from painful periods is an issue. No one should be suffering from painful periods. That is an easy fix. We can fix that in two twos. Fuck painful periods. No period should be painful. If your daughter is having her period and that she's just painful, let's fix it. I spoke about this last week. With moms having, having the realization, coming to the realization that, listen, why should she have to suffer? What do you, what do you think it is? Because, because Eve gave Adam the fruit and so now we have to suffer from painful periods? Guys, get the fuck out of here. That's fucking retarded. No. The reason why we suffer from painful periods is because we are not educated about periods. We're not educated on how to fix it. We're not educated on how to heal it. When my period comes, if I am not tracking it, which I usually do anyway, but if I am not tracking it, I don't know that the period is coming because I have no symptoms. I don't have breast tenderness. I don't have headache. I don't have back pain. I don't have cramping. I don't have nausea. I don't have one fucking thing, right? When the period is there, the period lasts for 48 hours or less, then it goes away and I keep that shit moving. It is not because I am special. It's not because I am, I am more healthy than anyone else. It's because I know, I know what's going on. I know what creates these issues. And so I do things or don't do things to make sure that I don't suffer from this type of fuckery. Pretty much, hands down. I love this chat. Thanks, Ramona. 
Rockwell. Oh my gosh, girl. I haven't seen you since you was a boy. We need to link. If you're in Jamaica, please link me up, man. We need to link. I haven't seen you in such a long time. Uh, I'm very excited about my consultation. Can't wait. I am excited for your consultation as well. Um, I want all of you guys to understand that when you guys book your consultations and you guys are excited about the fact that, oh my gosh, I'm getting my consultation, there is like some hope, please know that I am also grateful. I am also grateful that you are allowing me to be a part of this journey. You know, when I went through my journey, my reproductive journey, my womb journey, whatever you want to call it, I had no one to talk to. I had no one to call. I had, I, it was just me, one, and Jesus walking through that shit, trying to work it out. I don't want my clients to have to feel that way. Ever. And when you have a consultation and you are now giving a treatment plan, you feel like you have a roadmap. You feel like, okay, now I kind of have an idea of what I need to do to get the goal that I want. So I am excited for your consultation because I know you're one step closer to your goal. So I'm glad. Can't wait to have my consultation with you. <laughs> I can't wait either. I'm glad. I'm glad. What's good for reducing fibroids? Okay, so when it comes to fibroids, fibroids are very different from like cysts, right? It's still a mass. It's still a mass that you can see, you know, through the ultrasound and that type of thing. But fibroids are, and I mean, they're still endo, um, estrogen driven, just like cysts would be. But fibroids are like very emotional. Now, guys, you're not going to go to your OBGYN and know that and hear that fibroids are emotional. Don't expect to hear that. You're not going to hear that. But they are. Fibroids are a tumor and any tumor is emotional. May it be benign or may it be malig malignant. It is emotional. So if you suffer from one fibroid or if you suffer from 20 fibroids, that is one or 20 issues that you have not dealt with, that are still plaguing you, which is why when you cut out the fibroid, two years later, four years later, six years later, guess what happens? The fibroid comes back. The fibroid comes back because that same issue and that same environment that created the fibroid is still there. Still there. So we want to make sure that we are fixing the environment so that the fibroid situation can shrink and does not come back. Hi, Tanisha. Yes, if you if you if you are interested in getting a consultation, send us a DM, send us a WhatsApp message. We'll definitely get you situated. I have Tanisha. You have fibroids. Okay, so if you have fibroids, you gotta want to watch. You want to watch what it is that you're eating. Okay, in terms of estrogen driven things. Okay, and I would definitely suggest some sound therapy. I use a lot of sound therapy when I was going through my um, reproductive journey and I even used it after and I still use it to this day, the sound therapy. So send a DM or a WhatsApp or whatever inbox so that I can send you some, um, some sound therapy, okay? Because sound therapy will definitely help. We have to get to the emotional aspect as much as we are do dealing with the physical aspect. PCOS has taken my happiness away from me. I don't even know what to do. PCOS will take away your happiness because you're probably bleeding all the time or never bleeding, wanting to get pregnant. It's not happening. You're not ovulating. 
you're putting on weight, but you're not even eating a whole heap of food, but you're putting on weight. Yeah, PCOS can be rough. It really can be. It really, really can be. Does milk product have anything to do with yeast infection? Yes. Milk products, um, brown sugar, white sugar, those things will definitely give you yeast infection. Stay away, stay away, stay away. I'm calling someone now. I don't know if the person is still on. Uh, someone's asking about um, information on pelvic floor issues. If you do suffer from pelvic floor issues, please take our yoni toning class. It will help you 100%. Please take it. You need a one on one, do that as well. Hi, goddess. We can't hear you. Hello. Okay, I'm definitely not hearing her. Um, so many women are suffering in silence. I'm sure they are forever grateful for your service. I pray healing for all of us who are suffering in some way or another. Yes, I agree. Um, a, lot of, a lot of women are suffering in silence and that's half the issue. That's really half the issue. Like, And because we're women and we need to be strong and we can do what any man can do and we need to hold down the family and we need to be the best versions of ourselves. And it just, it's hard. It really is hard, you know? Um, but I want you guys to know that there, there are options and it doesn't have to be that way. It definitely doesn't have to be that way. Wish I had known about this page before I got IUD for endo, which didn't fix the problem, but I'm over here learning now. Okay. So if you're on an IUD for endometriosis, get it out. Take that shit out. That is not helping your situation. That is only making your situation worse. Okay? Especially if it's like the marina or one of them there, the one that goes in your arm. Take it out. Take it out. Take it out. You don't want any fake hormones. It's not going to make your situation better. It's actually going to make your situation worse. Exactly. Gaining weight without eating. Yes, with PCOS, you do gain weight without eating. You gain weight without having to do anything because your metabolism is slowed down because the liver is stressed out. Okay, a lot of times women that suffer from PCOS sometimes develop diabetes. It's all connected. Jovi Rockwell, next caller. <laughs> I'm glad I tuned in. What can be done to our retroverted ovary does it affect reproductive system okay a retroverted ovary or a retroverted uterus please let me know what you mean how can we stop long bleeding okay guys so if anyone if any woman if any of your friends anyone is bleeding too long and too long is always like well okay for me too long is like five days but too long is definitely more than seven days. If she's bleeding more than that, I would definitely suggest um, Shepherd's Purse and Yarrow Herb Blend mixed together. I would also uh, recommend Abuto, which is great as well. If anybody needs that, if you're in the US, if you're in Jamaica, if you're in Japan, if you're in Spain, of course, um, you can get that. We have, um, we have ways and means to get that to you guys. So. If that's an issue, please let me know. But the lung bleeding thing needs to cut down. This lung bleeding thing is depleting us from all the goodness and the niceness and the wonderfulness that we have inside of us. Been bleeding for a month. Wow. I can only imagine what your iron looks like and can only imagine, you know, the stress that your body is going under. 
please send us a message. We I want you on Shepherd's Purse, Yarrow, for sure. Drink it as a tea twice a day, every day. It will, it will stop the bleeding. Okay? And then do a steam after. I messaged you on WhatsApp. Okay, great. Do you treat block tubes? Yes, we treat block tubes. Don't do surgery for block tubes, guys. Don't do it. Surgery for block tubes is effery. It puts you in a situation where you will have to do IVF. I don't know one woman that has done surgery for her tubes and gotten pregnant. I don't know. I'm not saying it's never happened. I'm just saying I don't know one. I've never heard of one. And the reason why is because the tubes are very sensitive. They're very delicate. So when you do surgery around that area, you find that the scar tissue ends up affecting the tube. And the scar tissue is a hell and powder hose to remove. So I do not suggest doing surgery. If you have black tube or black tubes, send us a DM, a WhatsApp. We will do a consultation if that's something you're interested in. And then we'll create a treatment plan to remove all of whatever is blocking the tube. Because a lot of times, women don't even think to themselves, what is blocking my tube? Most women don't even think about that. But we need to think about it. What is it? What's blocking it? What do you think? The tube is just swollen and it just lock up? Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes it's because it's inflamed. But that's mostly, that's not the reason. Most of the reason is because the, the tube is filled with pus or mucus or plaque or scar tissue. That's usually what it is. Okay. PCO is stressing with the facial hairs. Yes, it is very stressful with the facial hairs when it comes to PCOS. I definitely re recommend you doing something about your liver, cleansing your liver, healing your liver, removing that male hormone from your liver. It will make a huge difference, huge, huge difference. If you guys have not um, gotten the hormonal blend, I definitely suggest that if you suffer from hair in manly places, maybe because of PCS, PCOS or not because of PCOS. It is extremely good to be able to balance the hormones. Um, it is a topical. You don't have to swallow it. Well, you don't swallow it. You put it on the bottom of your feet before you go to bed. You rub it in the palm of your hand. You can rub it on your spine. If you do a manicure or a pedicure, you put a little bit in the water. You soak your fingers. You soak your toes. That type of thing. But it really helps. It really helps. Not to mention if you're also doing things for your liver and cleansing your liver. So I would recommend um, the liver tonic for sure. Please, please, what set me back with the info I asked? We'll send you a reminder later. Yes, please, just send me a reminder later. Send me a WhatsApp message. I do not remember what you have said. I don't know if I've even seen it yet. It's been a busy day, Tanisha, but yes, I will definitely look at it, and once I see it, I will respond to you. Can you say this live, please? All the lives are saved, guys. They're all there, and you can go to the YouTube channel just in case. What about the women who don't have endoblock tubes or PCOS but not getting pregnant? You need a consultation. I have many clients that come to me and they're not getting pregnant. And when I look at their file, I'm like, damn girl, you don't have an issue. But she does have an issue. It is very underlined. It is quiet. It can be because of waste. It can be because of dehydration. So there's always something. Now, guys, guess what? They're tuning me out. They have told me I have 10 more seconds. So I just want to thank you guys so much for tuning in to Womb Wednesdays. We are here every Wednesday. If you are not following the Vagina Lady, please do so. Thanks.